In this video, we're going to use a three distribution diagram to help solve proportion confidence interval problem. We'll use the six step process suggested in the textbook. Step number one has to do with coming to understand the problem. Here are the questions that I suggest you ask when you're doing that. One, what's the population that we're interested in? In this case, it has to do with the batteries produced by a company. Now, if we looked at any one of those batteries, what are we interested in seeing? We want to know if the battery was sold to the government or not. That suggests that the parameter of interest is what proportion of the batteries are sold to the government. To help us determine an answer, take a random sample of 523 batteries. That random experiment will produce a random variable, the proportion of the random sample that is sold to the government. We developed a three distribution diagram for proportions in a previous video. We'll use this diagram to help us build a map for calculating the confidence interval. We're looking for a 92% confidence level. We know that our sample size is 523. The number of successes in that sample is 227. That means that we can calculate a p hat for this sample by taking r divided by n. We don't know where that lands on this p hat act. Now what we want to do is to find a margin of error some distance so that if I were to go one margin of error above the population proportion and one margin of error below then 92 percent of all the p hats would be within one margin of error of the population proportion. So if I add a margin of error to p hat and subtract a margin of error from p hat. Now remember that I'm 92 percent confident that p hat lands between here and here. And as long as it does, then this orange interval captures the real population proportion. Of course, there's a 4% chance that I'm up here, or a 4% chance that I'm down here, a total of 8% chance that I, that I don't land here. But heaven's sakes, I've got a 92% chance that my p hat is between here and here. And every time it is, this orange interval captures the real population proportion. Now, we don't know what the population proportion is, so we can't find the standard error, and we can't find that margin of error here. However, we could come down to this standard normal distribution, and find a critical z value and its symmetric sister negative zc so that 92% of the area is between a negative zc and a positive zc. I can't find the standard deviation up here because I don't know what p is. However, I can approximate p with p hat and then I could find q hat. If p hat is the probability of success, then q hat, the probability of failure, is just 1 minus p hat. So because I can find this, I can find both of these and I can approximate this standard deviation. Once I have that standard deviation approximated and I know how many standard deviations I need to be away, I can just take my zc times my se to find my ME. So the margin of error is simply this critical z value times this standard error. The three distribution diagram is the roadmap for us to calculate the confidence interval. So let's tell R how to get the job done. Our confidence level is 92%. Our sample size is 523. We have 227 successes. So we can calculate our sample statistic, which is a point estimate for the proportion that we're trying to find. Since we're going to need to know q hat, let's go ahead and calculate it now. q hat is just going to be 1 minus p hat. And now we have all the p pieces to find this standard error. Now let's go back just a little bit. We want to shout out p hat and we need to shout out the standard error. So let's start to work on finding this critical z value. I'm going to calculate something called alpha, which is 1 minus the confidence level. Remember that over here we have this confidence level, this 92% confidence level, and the total area under the curve of this standard normal curve is 1, so the area outside of that confidence level is going to be 1 minus the confidence level. We called it alpha because it's related to the uh, alpha in a two-tailed hypothesis test. But a single tail, one of those individual tails, either the tail here in the lower 
portion or the tail here in the upper portion. Those are both symmetric to each other, so they're the same size. Either one of those will be alpha divided by 2. So now we have enough information to find this ZC. We have two tools to help us find probabilities at Z values in a standard normal curve. One is a P norm and the other is a Q norm. In this case we want to use a Q norm because we know some area information and we're trying to find this quantile. But to find that ZC we need to tell R what the total area is below that ZC. We don't know the total area, we only know this portion of the area. We also know the area of this tail. So there's at least two ways that we can find what ZC is using a Q norm. We could say Q norm of the, that's this confidence level, plus this tail on the left. Or equivalently, we could think of the total area under the curve being 1 and subtracting from that total area this upper tail. Those will give equivalent results. So use one of those methods to find the critical Z value. We've already calculated our estimate for the standard error, so we can now find our margin of error. And I believe the rubric suggests that we shout out that margin of error. Let's create something called LB for the lower bound, which is just going to be p hat minus the margin of error. And an upper bound is p hat plus the margin of error. Let's uh, run that script. Let me just quickly correct an error here. Alpha, I needed to have that arrow symbol, the less than and the minus sign. So let's run the script. And so there's our script with the shout outs. Okay, let's put it all together in a written report. We restate the problem and we do step number one. We've already talked about that step. In step number two, we state the confidence level and create the three distribution diagram. Step number three, we state the assumptions. Because we don't know what P or Q is, we'll need to use P hat and Q hat as our approximations. In step four, we provide the R script along with the appropriate shout outs. Be sure that you're checking the rubric so that you know what things you need to shout out. I'll bet that I'm supposed to shout out that critical Z value. Check the rubric so that you know what to shout out. And of course, the reason that we do the project is to be able to give this confidence interval.